What's up guys? Um, so today is uh, the first brew day in my new house. Um, going to be re-brewing the New England IPA I brewed uh, in my last video, but this time I'm going to experiment a little bit and I'm going to get rid of the flaked oats and flaked wheat. I'm also going to use a different yeast. I'm just trying to see how uh, the haziness will play a part with a uh, more, flocculent wheat, uh, more flocculent yeast. Um, and doing the same hop profile, same hop timing, um, see if the biotransformation does anything. Um, keeping the water profile the same, everything else is going to be the same. So, just going to experiment a little bit, see how much the grain and yeast play a part. Um, we'll see if this can taste any, any closer to what it did. All right, let me show you guys the recipe. All right, so you can see here, recipe is pretty much similar. I added a little bit more two row um, in the homebrew shop I went to, didn't have the carabine, so I used Crystal 20 and Carapils. Um, should come out the same. Hot profile is exactly the same, not changing anything. Everything's gonna be the same there. Um, and then I'm gonna use California Ale yeast this time, so a little more uh, close to the West Coast style. And we'll see if that changes anything. Mash, everything else is gonna be the same. Water profile is going to be pretty much the same as well. We're going to stick to the uh, New England IPA uh, profile that I made in the last video. And we're going to come in at about 5.3 pH. Um, this time we're going to still add the more calcium chloride than, or I'm sorry, you're going to have more gypsum than calcium chloride, but you're still going to have more chloride than sulfate. Um, so there's that. So my uh, assumptions before we brew is this is going to be uh, probably a lot clearer. Um, I'm hoping that the hops still come out the same, so we're going to try that out. Alright, let's get on the brew day. Okay, so we are about 10 minutes into the mash, you can see. It's not looking as porgy as it did the last time. A lot more like a normal mash, so. We'll let this go for uh, 60 minutes and get started on the boil. Alright, so we just started sparging, you can see. It's a nice dark orange red color, crystal clear, no haze at all. So hopefully this is uh this is how it stays throughout the uh beer. Hey guys, so sorry I didn't get to post anything from the boil. Uh it was actually a pretty wild brew day. We had a couple people in and out of the house. Um, so I didn't get a chance to show any of the boil, but um, the boil was actually pretty much the same as the other video. Um, if you boiled one, you boiled them all. So we did not do any bittering charge. We had no 60 minute edition, no uh, early editions at all. Um, we had a 15 minute citra edition. We had a five minute galaxy edition. And then we had our big whirlpool again of four ounces worth of hops. Um, so uh, let me show you guys the, uh, how we have the fermentation set up for this one. All right, so we are gonna ferment this one in the uh, SS Brew Tech. So I just got done draining the trube. You can see, pretty murky. So what I did this time is I uh, let the trube sit, um, let it settle for about an hour before I pitch the yeast, which is right here. So we're going to be pitching the WLP001 this time, not the 1318. So again, with this uh, experiment that we're doing, we're going to see if we still get that cloudiness out of a big whirlpool and a big dry hop. So let's add the yeast. Okay, so we pitched at 66. I'm gonna let that rise a little bit to 68. Um, and then we're gonna get going. So let me show you what the sample's looking like. So here's our sample. You can see it's much clearer than the uh, New England was. Try to get that to focus a little bit. So you can see it's pretty clear. A Little bit of uh, troop floating around, but not too bad. It's much clearer than the uh, New England was already. Tastes pretty good, tastes like an IPA, so we'll see how this comes out. Um, we're going to do our early dry hop edition probably on the second day of fermentation again. I think the last one we did 55 hours in, so I'll try to keep it close and do it around the same time. So we'll see how that goes, and I'll update. Okay, guys, so we are just under three days post-pitch. We have not dry hopped yet. We're a little later than we were on the... Uh, the the hazier uh, version of this. I think we did that at 55 hours. Um, this one we're probably looking closer to 60 hours, uh, but no no worries, shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, you can see bubbling's a little slower than it was in the first video. Um, that could be attributed to a different yeast, uh, a little longer. But either way, there should be some corrosion in there. So let me pop the top and let's take a look in. All right, so you can see 
we have our Croizen still. Pretty similar to last time, so we're going to pitch our two ounces of hops here. This time I cut the bag so that I won't lose all the hops. So let me pitch these in and uh, get them mixed in. I'll resume in a second. Okay, so we just pitched our two ounces in. You can see, same thing as last time. The bubbles really kick up. I think part of that has to do with just carbonation leaving solution and then kind of everything getting active with the hops going in. But um, hops all went in two ounces right on the Croizen. Um, so we'll let this go. I will say the smell on this was just like the New England. So I'll follow up when we do our second dry hop. What's up, guys? Uh, so we are here uh, about eight days into fermentation. Uh, I just pulled a sample so you guys can see. It's pretty, uh, pretty murky. I'd say there's still a lot of hops floating around. This is probably a pretty cold crash. So uh, I don't think it'll end up like this. Smell wise is actually pretty close to the other uh, to the other beer. It's got that tropical uh, fruit. Pretty late right now because we haven't done the second dry hop, which we're gonna do now. So uh, I'm gonna get ready to do my second dry hop of Citra and some Galaxy. So we're gonna get that pitched in right now. So you can see, Croizen has fell. So we are definitely uh, done fermentation. So let me get these hops in real quick before I let too much oxygen. All right, so we just pitched in the hops. Uh, so today's day eight. We're probably gonna go about two days at uh, normal temp. Then we'll do a cold crash, get these hops dumped out of the cone, uh, and then get this into a keg. So it should be roughly about the same time, maybe a day or two longer um, than the, than the uh, batch with the oats and the wheat did. But um, we'll see how uh, close this comes in comparison. Um, just based off a quick taste of the sample. It's pretty good. Um, again, bitterness isn't isn't crazy bitter it's not in your face bitter but it's there um so again with the late bittering charges it didn't really uh i don't think it really affected too much it actually made it a little more pleasant um look again i mean you can see i definitely think it's more just needs to be cold crashed than it's just that haze that it was with the oats um so we'll see once i cold crash this and get it ready for kegging all right check in about four days Hey guys, so uh, just got done kegging the non-wheat, non-oat uh, New England IPA. It smells pretty much exactly the same. You can see there's a little bit of settling in the bottom even after I cold crashed. So there's definitely a little bit. It's still pretty hazy, so you can see that. But the uh, color's a little darker. It's almost like an orange. But it's a little clearer than the other one was. Uh, it's not overly clear. But... Um, Taste-wise, it's almost point, on point with the other one. Uh, a little more bitterness. I don't know if it just comes through more because of without the oats or... Um, I, I'm not sure, but a little more bitterness in the taste. Uh, it's not overly bitter, but um, from what I remember, it's definitely a little more bitter. So um, Everything else seems to be almost the same, so I'm going to carbonate it. Uh, it should be ready in a couple days, and then uh, I'll post the final video update. Uh, but so far, so good. Hey, what's up, guys? So... We uh, are here with our finished product. See if you guys can get a good look at this. You can see, pretty hazy. Not as hazy as it was before. It was almost like a um, like a dark milky color. This one is definitely a lot uh, different. Let me just show you guys what this uh, looks like in the light. So you can see, sorry, bad angle. You can see it's definitely got some of that hop haze still. Again, this was not brewed with any oats. This was not brewed with um, a low flocculent yeast. This was the uh, WLP001 yeast, which is uh, medium flock to high, medium to high flocculent. So normally it produces a pretty clear beer. Um, the hops were the same as before, but no, uh, no oats, no wheat. So this is just a basic, uh, pretty much a West Coast IPA grain bill. The aroma it definitely still got that that, that transfer. Um, that makes sense. Uh, it, it where the hops kind of change that biotransformation. Um, they were kind of like that juicy tropical smell. Definitely still underwent that. As for the flavor, the body is definitely not nearly as uh, as full as it was with the New England style. Um, 
it's more of like the West Coast body meets the New England hop flavor, uh, if that makes any sense. This is actually pretty appealing to me. Uh, I do enjoy the nice, um, crisp, dry West Coast style, um, but I also like the flavor of the New England style. So this is actually a pretty good hybrid beer. Um, maybe one day this will become a, a trend out there. But um, I would say that the little experiment that I did worked pretty well. Uh, switching the chloride and sulfate, doing a, a medium to high flocculent yeast, and still doing the biotransformation dry hop. Um, I'd say this is a pretty good beer. Uh, if I had to pick my favorite... I'd say I'd say probably this one. Um, it's it's a pretty close call because they were both really good, but uh, I'd say this one wins. So, all in all, pretty good. Uh, if anyone has any questions about this, let me know. Um, I know it wasn't really a, an official experiment, but um, it worked out for me. So, any questions, let me know. Uh, I'm gonna be posting a couple more videos in the upcoming month. Uh, if you have anything you want to see, I do have one of uh, one of my subscribe subscribers uh, asked for a red. Irish Red, so I'll be brewing that sometime this summer. Um, I also have a Blonde Ale that's right here, finishing up fermenting. I did not do a video for this one. Um, I also have a Saison that uh, is getting ready to go into a barrel, and I have that video coming up. So be on the lookout, um, subscribe, like, and uh, cheers.